Welcome to the video format of the Entrepreneur Lifestyle Podcast. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to our podcast using the link below. And now enjoy this interview. Today, I'm here with Marco Torres, who is the co-founder of marketingboost.com. He's helped thousands of business owners worldwide to boost sales and scale their businesses by as much as fivefold using incentive-based marketing. Marco, I'm so excited to have you joining me today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Well, uh, let's kind of dive straight in. And for those who you know, don't know you, would you mind just doing as best you can a quick 60 second introduction to kind of your story so we can have more of a feel for what brought you uh, on this entrepreneurial path? Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, I've been a, I guess a serial entrepreneur since a very early age. I guess by the, by the time I was 12, I was featured on the front page of uh, the local newspaper for building the biggest paper route. I went on to open uh, with my older brother and my mom. We had I had five restaurants and a nightclub by the time I was 23 years old. Uh, I got into uh, internet marketing very early on in the mid 90s. Uh, I was an early adapter to internet marketing, email marketing. I was a shoot, they, I was a spammer, huge spammer before they called it before they even called it spam. Uh, <laughs> I was doing 100 million emails a month in the mid in the late 90s. And, and back then, people loved their email. Everybody had an AOL account. And, and it was like, you've got mail. They loved it. So only later did it become annoying. <laughs> uh, thanks to me and my fellow uh, email marketers, probably. But uh, no, uh, so I've been around and watching the evolution of the internet for our, since the very early days. Um, I've had an opportunity to generate over a billion dollars in sales for either my own businesses or my clients. And um, uh, it's been a fun journey to, to uh, you know, learn and watch and take from, you know, learn what, 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 take, what makes people click, what makes people take action, what makes people buy. And there, hopefully I can add some value bombs today uh, to your audience. Fantastic. Well, I mean, there's so much to unpack there. I kind of want to go you know, straight into perhaps a, a really challenging moment that I think a lot of people can relate to. Uh, and this is the uncertainty that I think a lot of businesses are facing. And you mentioned that one of the most challenging moments for you was kind of starting from scratch in 2009. I think a lot of people perhaps experiencing that or they're pivoting their businesses or they're finding you know, a way to go through with the current market conditions. And I'm curious, uh, what was it that kind of brought you through that time? And what was that drive and that focus that enabled you to kind of come out of that incredibly challenging moment when you're starting from scratch? Yeah, I, uh, I did um, uh, lose everything in 2008, 2009, and thought I was on top of the world before all of that. I mean, I was uh, head of a huge company at the time. I was also an entrepreneur and a, an employee. I, had, I was a VP of a big company, and my wife and I owned businesses as well. And man, it all, it all came to a scratching halt and, you know, it, uh, had to fire 2000 employees, got laid off myself. And then my own businesses one by one started to fail. And little by little, I had the best sales year of my life. I sold uh, everything, my house, my car, my boats, my, <laughs> it was a, we had all kinds of sales, man, furniture, uh, just about everything. <laughs> no, but to come back from that, it was a matter of mindset. Truly. It really was it. It took me, I mean, I really did get dive into the de depths of uh, depression and everything else as I figured early on, ah, I'm going to bounce, I'm going to easily go, you know, vertically into another position. And it really took me a while to come back. And I, what I ended up doing was that I've always done is leveraged relationships. And I got uh, lucky enough to get tied back in with some friends of mine that I had done business with in the past. And we were all in a similar boat and we came together and pooled our resources, our our mindsets, of course, and what little capital we had, and uh, the uh, you know, and we divided and conquered really. So that, uh, and I've always had success with with partnering with with other business owners to to try doing things together. Not everybody su is successful at at having partnerships, but it uh, I think it can be a great way to leverage. Uh, workload you know to leverage conquer and divide we had you know in my case for example one of us focused on sales the other focused on marketing the other focused on our on our contracts and relationships the other on financing and accounting and between the four of us we built what became one of the fastest growing travel sites in north america and then that that bounced off over time into what we have is marketingboost.com today hmm. so what's what's interesting is the the 
power with which you're looking at relationships and how fundamental they were for you to bounce back. So what do you think is key in maintaining those? Because I think a lot of people struggle with kind of how do I motivate my co-founders? Yeah, how do I get them on the same page? Like what are some things that you found through the businesses that you run that allow you to maintain those strong relationships and keep things thriving? Threats. Threaten them. <laughs> Threaten them with lawsuits. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, it, it is like a marriage. I mean, we did have uh, at times, uh, you know, battles of like any any couple, you know, where we people are feeling like the other the other the other partners are not doing their share, not pulling their load, and uh, or 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 whatever the issues might be. And uh, it's it's an ongoing sales process. You're you're still needing to you know have good communication skills. You need to uh, one you know spell it out, say it. When something is bothering you, don't let it build up until the point where, just like in any relationship, you let it build up to the point where you want to you know destroy them. You want to you want to choke them. You know, and then you want to <laughs> you want to divorce or whatever. Sure. Uh, it, you know, if you get to that point, it's it can be too late, right? So. Yeah communication along the way, salesmanship along the way. You've got to sell yourself every day to get up and do your, your share. And you've got to sell your partners on it as well, which means continuing to sell the dream, sell the plan, you know, motivate everybody and, um, uh, and then hold them accountable. Mm. So, I mean, you obviously mentioned, you know, getting them sold on everything, keeping them accountable and moving things forward. How do you manage that from a standpoint of, kind of building stuff up when you have a team that does obviously a lot of what you're doing and then you have to kind of go back to square one. It's a very humbling experience, but was there ever that kind of challenge of like, you know, why do I have to do this? Like, when can I get someone else to do it? Like, how do you battle with that mindset? Well, good question. And I'm trying to go back to those days early on and remember, you know, when, and it was a matter of, you know, there was no choice really at that point in the 2009, 2010 years, as we were starting back up, it was like, you know, uh, we, we, um, we're going to get this done and we're, and there's little, there's not a lot of resources to hire people out to do this. So that means we're, we're all, you know, going to be doing whatever, whatever it takes to get the, you know, to get the ball rolling. And one mistake I do see a lot of entrepreneurs make is once they do start to get things organized, they continue to want to do everything themselves. And whether you've got partners or not, in other words, where you, you, you want to be a control freak and you want to do too much and you end up working 16, 18 hours a day. And I, I truly believe anything that you do over and over every single day, you need to turn that into a business process and you need to outsource it. You need to hire people smarter than you, better than you, that, or, or at least better than you at that particular task mm -hmm. so that you can, you can unload the tasks as they come along have somebody else be doing that so you can keep, keep looking at the bigger picture of the business and uh, looking at the next big step that you need to take. If you're boggled down in all of the daily uh, routines of running the day-to-day the -day business, you're not seeing the big picture and you're not able to negotiate the next big opportunity and you're just, you know, working for the business versus rather in the business rather than for the business. And so... Um, uh, as soon as you have any additional cash flow, that's when you want to start reinvesting it into hiring, you know, staff outsource or outsourcing at least parts of your daily tasks to others so that you can see a little more than just seeing with the blinders on every day. You need to see the big 30,000 foot view of your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that's you know, incredibly important for people to be able to see that bigger view and to see. You know, overall, what, you know, where is it that I can focus? I think a challenge that a lot of entrepreneurs face is that they gain that time back, but then they don't know where to focus with the time that they've received. So how do, how do you know where to focus? Like once you've won back that time, is there a certain outcome that you have? Like, no, I'm going to focus on revenue or I know what they are. I'm going to sort of double down on what works for me. I'm just curious from your wealth of experience where you tend to focus at that point in time after you've outsourced. Yeah, uh, the eighty twenty rule, you know. So you've you might have a list of stuff that that, and that's obviously important to do. Your list of things you'd like to accomplish over the next year or two years, and and then you know you 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 don't you don't want to just start randomly going through that ideas that you'd like to accomplish, but you want to break it down and and overlap them into 
which are likely to be the most successful, which are, you know, and, and look for that 80, 20 rule, only 20% of your, of your 20% of your projects, whatever they are, are going to mm -hmm. actually produce 80% of your revenue. So you've got to focus on, you know, start looking at which ones do you think are going to make the most impact, which ones are the, mo are the, are the easiest that are the most likely you'll be able to accomplish over the next, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, whatever it is that you're setting up your next goal for. And, uh, and then, carve that out one at a time and attack them one at a time. Um, but you can't, if, if you're scrambling, doing, trying to accomplish too many things at the same time, then it's like nothing gets done. So focus on the 20% rule, you know, pick the top two out of 10 and, and then try to chisel that down to the top one out of those two and then focus on that. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think you mentioned something really interesting about chiseling it down and looking in obviously 20, 20, 80 Pareto principle is very important, but I think a lot of people struggle where they just get overwhelmed. There's too many things going on and they don't know, you know, the, the best thing to move forward. And for yourself, obviously as a serial entrepreneur, you have, you have different businesses going on at the same time. Like you've got digital experts, you've got marketing boost. So there's obviously yeah, perhaps some other ventures as well. So I'm curious how you know, like what your focus is so that you don't spread yourself too thin. Um, yeah, good question, and that easily uh, easily happens to to any of us. And um, uh, I focus on again; it's a matter of delegation and and hiring the right people around you, so that you can delegate. You can really need to delegate and trust the people you delegated to different projects, so that you can step back on it, look at it, look at the numbers, make decisions from thirty thousand, you know, from from ten thousand feet up and decisions based on this is going the right direction or it's not, what can we, what can we do? And, and ask your team, look for, as you're building a team, get their input, you know, get their ideas, more, more than one head involved in, or one more brain involved in, in, in looking for solutions is gonna be better than possibly just your own. So you want to um, uh, have brainstorming sessions with, with your, your team and crews as often as possible, come up with, look at ideas, uh, see which ones of those might be something worth uh, implementing and scrap the rest and, and keep trying and then delegate it and trust that they'll get it done. And then, you know, so that you can focus on your other project you were working on and then eventually do the same with that. Have team members that you can delegate things to and then you can follow up and, and you're just following up with your team leaders to see, is this getting done? Are we moving forward? Is the ball, is the ball moving in the right direction? Brilliant. So when it comes to your focus now, you know, a lot of that's obviously on marketing boost. C can you clarify for those who've got no idea what that is, uh, a little bit about what you're doing and the impact that you're having on that added value for business owners to help them differentiate themselves in the market and get more sales? Sure. As, because we were in the travel space for, you know, since 2010 and 11, uh, we, uh, we eventually built a company called marketingboost.com, which is a subscription service for entrepreneurs worldwide to be able to uh, have access to our travel incentives. These are, these are high perceived value incentives that business owners can use in whatever their call to action is to add value to that call to action, add value to their sales or to their offer rather than discounting. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about three categories of incentives, complimentary hotel stays in over 130 destinations around the world, three night stays in places like Las Vegas, Orlando, Branson, New York, San Diego, five night stays in places like Cancun, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo San Lucas, seven, five night stays in Hawaii, seven night stays in places like Phuket, Thailand, and Bali. Mm -hmm. Then we have restaurant savings vouchers that come in uh, increments of 100, 2, 3, and $500, and restaurant savings vouchers. So with a little creativity, you can literally scale your business and make you know tens of thousands or even you know one might comes to mind have made over a million dollars using marketing boost in the last year and um, that is by by adding these these calls adding these incentives to whatever your call to action is whether it be something as simple as offering a hundred dollar hotel savings card for booking a zoom call with you or your staff to book a no obligation you know, uh, Zoom call to see if there's if it's a good opportunity to work together or not, and reward them for showing up on time. I mean, people are using Zoom now like like uh, crazy now. It's a phenomenal technology. We can all have conversations with people anywhere in the world without having to drive all over town, and we can um, 
we can incentivize that to get people to actually show up on time. If you had more more of the appointments that you were booked actually showed up, could you generate more sales possibly? I think so. So that's one of the challenges we have today is people, we, we have a lot of bookings, but then there's a high percentage of no-shows. That's the incentives are an example of how to solve that one simple problem as an example. Uh, and these incentives can be used from everything from loyalty programs, solving customer service issues, generating um, generating leads with sweepstakes and contests. Um, shoot, I can go on and on on, on <laughs> millions yeah. of ways to use the incentives. Got it. Okay, so fantastic. So for for someone listening in, how would they know if that's right for them? Is like, is there a perhaps a target market? Is it a small business owner? Is it larger? What kind of person would be right for that service? Well, yeah, our service is geared to to business owners of all types. Really, we have everything from from lemonade stands up in New York to car dealerships in Chicago, to chiropractors, business coaches, uh, insurance sales reps, realtors. Literally, the the, the entire gamut of, of mm -hmm. entrepreneurs we have found have been using our service. Our Facebook group alone is over 28,000 entrepreneurs that come into the group and there we are we are constantly teaching each other and we're providing content as well on you know ideas on how to use these incentives, how to position mm -hmm. them into your action, into your call to action, how to disclose the disclaimers. For example, the, the complimentary hotel stays, well, they don't include airfare, they don't include food and beverage, and they don't include sure. government taxes and fees. And so that's the kind of thing that we'll teach you, you know, in, in a sales funnel, for example, how to yeah. how to how to how to implement them, how to how to um, uh, organize it so that it flows with your offering and helps with the call to action. And by yeah. the way, it's only $37 a month to be a member of Marketing Boost. So that part is a, a no brainer for any entrepreneur to give it a whirl, give it a test, you know, test some campaigns. There's no long-term commitment and, uh, and give it a shot. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And, and I think it does make a, a world of difference. And I love that subscription model. So I definitely say, you know, if you're interested in you know, how that works and looking at that business model, definitely check out marketingboost.com. Um, I, I do want to kind of throw a curveball to you here, Marco, to say the following. If all your businesses at the moment crashed and you couldn't go into, you know, setting up Marketing Boost or setting up, you know, digital um, experts and you had to start again, what kind of business would you create right now, given the way the world is moving? I would be an affiliate marketer first and market other people's products um, and start that, you know, first. And as I was building up cash flow on marketing other people's products, I would look at what can I do of my own, or I would get into remarketing a, you know, marketing a SaaS product of some sort, either, you know, either white labeling somebody's product and selling a, a SaaS, a, a service as a uh, software as a service type pro product, because right now I think it's more entrepreneurs around the world than ever before, and they are needing technology, they're needing solutions, they're needing automation, and uh, that is one of the businesses I am developing now as well as an add-on to Marketing Boost. We do provide the the solutions to automation for email text messaging and so on but that's what i would what uh, uh what i'm as a new we have a relatively new company we started out in that direction and i'm very excited about it and i think that that would be the direction that if i was starting over again i would i would continue to do because everyone's going to need no matter how bad the economy gets we're going to need uh technology and we're going to need uh automation services to to grow whether it be a uh whatever size entrepreneurship you are, you, you need automation today. If you don't have it, you need it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I think that um, a very interesting white labeling, um, you know, that SaaS side of things after you build up that income and looking into, you know, the what is it that people need and then looking to market that. I think it's a very interesting way in which to look at leveraging other people's creations and moving it forward. I don't think many entrepreneurs think like that. I think a lot of people think of, I need to create something myself versus leveraging something that is already out there and has been created. I'm curious where that mindset has come from, if you had that, or if that's something that you've developed through the experience that you've had. Um, well, it came about, one of the reasons why I believe in that is, you know, that's when how we built Marketing Boost, for example. When we built Marketing Boost, we focused on uh, having finding affiliate marketers to market our program. 
And we gener first thing we did for the first year was market exclusively to affiliates, to find affiliates that would be interested in marketing our product. And we have, uh, well, we have one Facebook group with 54,000 affiliate marketers in that Facebook group alone. And many of those are actively marketing, you know, marketing, marketing boost for us. So, for example, we haven't spent hardly any mark, you know, money in marketing for the last two years because our affiliates carry us for it. So we no longer have to spend huge, you know, dollars retail to, to go direct to consumer because we've got the affiliate marketers out there market, remarketing our and, and sending us referrals, so to speak. So I know the power of affiliate marketing. And therefore, if, if I was lost at all and had to start over, I would, I would want to follow that route, sell other people's existing services that are proven to have products and services that people are willing to pay for. And then as I'm, um, as I'm growing my revenue again, I would you know, maybe position it to where I'm uh, white labeling something that I can. And the reason I like white labeling is there, it's just so expensive to build, to invent, or, you know, it can be very time consuming and very costly to build and invent your own thing when there's um, so much out there that you could possibly find and white label it and, and run with it. Yeah, love that. And if there was one piece of advice that you could give to kind of an entrepreneur listening who is going through their journey, but hitting a hard point in time, what would that piece of advice be for that person who's struggling? Uh, prayer one and uh, <laughs> put a little, put a little, you know, look for uh, Look for support from above or from where, whoever you believe in, so that uh, so that you can wake up with the attitude of gratitude. Uh, I, I struggle with that myself. I am one that has a lot of uh, anger issues. Uh, uh, you know, if things don't go just right, I'm flipping. I can easily flip off the hook, and I need to remind myself every day that you know there's got to be something I can be grateful for, and whether even if it's just the fact that I'm breathing today and be grateful for so that I can then focus on, okay, now that we know the big things are taken care of, let's focus on how I can, how I can uh, make money today, how I can make payroll this week, how I can, you know, whatever it is that you're, you know, you're struggling with, but sometimes you can't get past that, that, if you can get the attitude of gratitude, you can get back to thinking bigger. Like I said, if I go back to 2009, 2008, 2009, when I was losing everything, there was a time when there was, I was rock bottom and there was no attitude of gratitude. I was feeling very much as a victim and that victim mentality will keep you there. It mm. will keep you right where you are. If you're feeling like a victim, then you are. And uh, I was there. I had to get over that. I had to get back to, you know, feeling, uh, uh, having the right mental strength and that starts with gratitude love that fantastic well marco thank you so much for sharing your wisdom uh with our audience i do want to say as well um do make sure to check out marketing boost and look into you know how marco's built this business it's been you know, an absolute pleasure to chat and uh, make sure to reach out uh to him if uh, you're not already checking it out whilst listening to this thank you so much marco thank you